I really do enjoy answering a lot of you guys' questions. That's why I do these Q&As once a month. So let's go ahead and dive into this month's Q&A. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name's Jimmy. Welcome to Coffee and Trains. Just drinking some more store brand coffee today. I can't get enough of it right there. If you want to tell me what kind of coffee you're drinking and have it featured just like these guys right here, you can leave that in the comments below. Also, this is the monthly Q&A, so you can leave questions for me to answer next month in the comments below as well. Cheers, guys. We're gonna dive right in with a question from Andy Belk. He asked about how I install my Arduino projects on my model railroad. Now I have quite a few ways of doing that, but he asked if I just mount it with a breadboard or can I turn it into a printed circuit board? Now, when I first started off, I used to just simply do the breadboards. I do have some adhesive backing, so you can just stick them about anywhere. But over the years, I've really gotten into ordering printed circuit boards. This is not one that I order, but one I'm beta testing for somebody. But this is what a printed circuit board is. It's just the circuit board that has all the parts on it and everything. And it's gotten pretty easy to order these things and relatively inexpensive to order your own custom circuit boards that you can then solder the parts onto. I've done this for several projects, and it's something that really comes out great Great. and it also makes it a lot easier and a lot neater in terms of wiring under your layout. So to answer your question, I used to use breadboards for my projects and that's totally okay as long as you secure everything properly, but I do like using printed circuit boards. Now for designing them, I am partial to Fritzing. That is a program that I'll link in the description below, but you can use any program that you like. Technocat has a bit of a problem right here. He says he has a train that keeps switching directions when running slow and doesn't run fast at all. And he's looking for some ideas of what could be going on. Well, the first thing is, is if it's DC or DCC. If it's DCC, the simplest thing that I'd recommend doing is a factory reset of your decoder. The way you do that is when whatever you're using to program the CVs in your decoder, set CV number eight to the value of eight or you can maybe do CV30 to a value of two, and that will reset your decoder. You'll just have to power down and then power it back up. Now, if you're DC, basically it might be an issue with your power pack, it may be an issue with your wire connections. You just need to go through the chain of what could all go wrong. You need to look at the connection from the train to the track, and then the track to the power supply, and that kind of stuff, and you just need to kind of eliminate different things. What's the saying? Um, if you eliminate the possible, the impossible, the only thing left is the solution or something like that. That's what I would recommend doing, just kind of doing a fault chain. I think that's what it's called, I can't remember, but just go, I would actually go from the power pack to the locomotive, just trying to figure out what the issue is if you're running DC. But if you're DCC, you may have an issue with your decoder and just need to factory reset it. And I hope it's not an issue where you need to replace the decoder, but that may be an issue as well. Patrick Forsyth has a similar issue. He says that he had a locomotive from Fleischmann that was working just fine, an in-scale one, and he said that it stopped working after about a week of use. It's just doing lights only back and forth, which he mentioned something about the digital system with it, which leads me to think that this is a DCC locomotive. So again, I would recommend the factory reset of your decoder. That could definitely help out with that. Also, you just need to look at that fault chain. You need to make sure that the motor is working properly and that the decoder is working properly. It's sounds like if the lights are working, the decoder is at least properly working. So what I would do is definitely look at the motor connections between your decoder and the motor itself. The fault might be in there, especially if it's shifted in a weird way and the connections aren't soldered down or something like that. There may be a little shift that has happened, uh, depending on if you move the locomotive or not. So definitely check that. That's probably where your two main things are going to be. Phil D asks, how much have I done with the Raspberry Pi other than just DCC components? Well, the truth is I haven't done much more than simply putting the JMRI Raspberry Pi image onto it. And that's that's literally all that I've done with a Raspberry Pi. I do, I think I have a Raspberry Pi 3B sitting somewhere around here. I do have it on my list to learn some basic Python because the nice thing about using a Raspberry Pi is it can do multiple things at once, whereas an Arduino is a microcontroller and it can do really one task at a time. So you could potentially use Arduino or Raspberry Pi 
APIs to control Arduinos and things like that, and it could simplify a lot of stuff. It's going to make the code more complicated, but it's going to make the wiring a lot more simple. So I do have it on my list to learn some code with Raspberry Pi, specifically trying Python and things like that. I know a lot of people's eyes just glazed over right there, but that is on my list of things to try and figure out just some basic stuff with Raspberry Pis uh, to try to work with model railroads. Antoine Sumter asks, what is the best version of an Amtrak layout in terms of stations and setup and all these kind of things? Well, if I'm looking for inspiration for an Amtrak-only layout, I'm definitely going to look at the northeastern U.S., specifically the northeast corridor, which pretty much stretches between Boston and D.C. So you have a lot of Amtrak traffic going through there, mainly because Amtrak owns the majority of its track that it runs on up there. That's why you see the Acela up there, the only high-speed rail in the U.S., and you don't see it anywhere else. Other places, Amtrak uses other trackage owned by the big freight rail companies. So if you're doing a primarily Amtrak layout, definitely look at the Northeast Corridor uh, for stations. You're also going to have the big stations like what you see in New York, Philly, DC, places like that. But you're also going to have small stations that are a little no more than platforms. And that's true across the country as well. In big cities, you're going to have these big stations. Denver has a beautiful station. And when you go through other places, like the really small rural places, the station may be a little brick station. Where I live, the station is a little tiny brick building and nothing else and not a great part of town um, or you may just have a simple shelter with a platform and nothing else these are called flag stops where the train will not stop unless it's being flagged and or it already knows that it's picking someone up there in modern times but that's the main things that I would do in terms of operations. You can implement something like having freight trains have to get right away to passenger trains, even though that doesn't happen all the time. So those are the things that I would do in terms of doing the best version of an Amtrak layout. I love answering your questions. If you have questions you'd like me to answer in next month's Q&A, leave them in the comments below. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, Drink some coffee and happy railroading.